Beseech you, sir, be merry, you have cause, so have we all of joy, for our escape is much beyond our loss. Our hint of woe is common. Every day some sailor's wife, the masters of some merchant, and the merchant have just our theme of woe, but for the miracle, I mean, our preservation. Few and millions can speak like this. Then wisely, good sir, weigh our sorrow with our comfort. Privy. Peace. Sir, we, we were talking that our, our, our garment seem now as fresh as when we were at Tunis at the marriage of your daughter, who is now queen. And the rarest that e'er came there. Bait, I beseech you, Widow Dido. Oh, Widow Dido, I, Widow Dido. Is not, sir, my doublet as fresh as the day I wore it? I mean, in a sort. That sort was well fished for when I wore it at your daughter's marriage. <sighs> you cram these words into mine ears against the stomach of my sins. Would I had never married my daughter there. For coming thence, my son is lost. And in my Ricci too, who is so far away from Italy removed, I ne'er again shall see her. Oh, thou mine heir of Naples and of Milan, what strange fish hath made his meal on thee? Sir, he may live. I saw him beat the surges under him and ride upon their backs. He trod the water. To the shore I not doubt he came alive to land. No, he's gone. Prithee, peace. Oh, had I a plantation on this isle, my lord. He'd sow it with nettle seed, or docks, or mallows. And were the king on it, what, what would I do? Escape being drunk for want of wine. In the commonwealth, I would buy contraries, execute all things, for no kind of traffic would I admit. No name of magistrates, letters should not be known, riches, poverty, and use of service none, contract. Succession, born, bound of land, tilleth vineyard, none. No use of metal, corn, or wine, or oil. No occupation. All men idle, all, and women too, but innocent and pure. No sovereignty. Yet he would be king on it. The latter end of his commonwealth forgets the beginning. All things in common, nature should produce without sweat or endeavor. Treason, felony, sword, pike, knife, gun, or need of any engine would I not have. But nature should bring forth its own kind, all foisome and abundance to feed my innocent people. No marrying among his subjects? None, man. All idle, whores and knaves. I would with such perfection govern, sir to excel the golden age. God save his majesty. Long live Gonzalo. And do you mark me, sir? Prithee, no more thou dost talk nothing to me. I do well believe your highness and did it to minister occasion to these gentlemen who are of such sensible and nimble lungs that they always used to laugh at nothing. "'Twas you we laughed at. "'Who, in this kind of merry fooling, am nothing to you. "'So you may continue and laugh at nothing still. "'What a blow was there given! "'And it had not fallen flat long. "'You are gentlemen of brave metal. "'You would lift the moon out of her sphere if she would continue. "'In it five weeks without changing. <laughs> We would so, and then go a bat fouling. Nay, good my lord, be not angry. No, I warrant you, I will not adventure my discretion so weakly. Will you laugh me asleep? For I am very heavy. Go, sleep, and hear us. What? All so soon asleep? I wish mine eyes would with themselves shut up my thoughts. I find they are inclined to do so. Please you, sir, do not omit the heavy offer of it. 
It seldom visits sorrow. When it doth, it is a comforter. We too, my lord, will guard your person while you take your rest and watch your safety. Thank you. Wondrous heavy. What a strange drowsiness possesses them. It is the quality of the climate. Why doth it not then our eyelids sink? I find not myself disposed to sleep. Nor I. My spirits are nimble. They fell together all as by consent. They dropped as by a thunderstroke. What might, worthy Sebastian? Oh, what might? No more. And yet methinks I see it in thy face. What thou shouldst be, the occasion speaks thee. And my strong imagination sees a crown dropping upon thy head. What? Art thou waking? Do you not hear me speak? I do. And surely it is a sleepy language, and thou speakst out of thy sleep. What is it thou didst say? This is a strange repose to be asleep with eyes wide open, standing, speaking, moving, and yet so fast asleep. Noble Sebastian, thou lest thy fortune sleep, die rather, winkst whilst thou art waking. Thou dost snore distinctly. Uh, there's meaning in thy snores. I am more serious than my custom. You must be so too, if heed me. Which to do trebles the oar. Well, I am standing water. I'll teach you how to flow. Do so, to ebb. Uh, prithee, say on. Although this lord of weak remembrance this, who shall be of as little memory when he is erred, hath here almost persuade, for he's a spirit of persuasion only, professes to persuade. The king, his son's alive. Tis as impossible that he's undrowned, and he that sleeps here swims. Well, I have no hope that he's undrowned. Oh, out of that no hope, what great hope have you? Will you grant with me that Ferdinand is drowned? He's gone. Tell me, who's the next heir of Naples? Clarabelle. She that is queen of Tunis. She that dwells ten leagues beyond man's life. What stuff is this? Tis true, my brother's daughter's queen of Tunis. So is she heir of Naples. Twixt which regions there is some space. A space whose every cubit seems to cry out, Clarabelle, keep in Tunis, and let Sebastian wake. Say this were death, that now hath seeds them, why they were no worse than now they are. There be that can rule Naples as well as he that sleeps, lords that can prate as amply and as necessarily as does Gonzalo. Oh, that you bore the mind that I do. What a sleep were this for your advancement. Do you understand me? Methinks I do. And how does your content tender your own good fortune? I remember you did supplant your brother Prospero. True. And look how well my garments sit upon me, much feeder than before. My brother's servants were then my fellows. Now they are my men. But for your conscience. Why, sir, where lies that? Here lies your brother. No better than the earth he lies upon. If he were that which now he's like, that's dead. Whom I, with this obedient steel, three inches of it, can lay to bed forever, while you, doing thus, to perpetual wink for I might put this ancient morsel, this Sir Prudence, who should not upbraid our course. For all the rest, they'll take suggestion as a cat laps milk. They'll tell the clock to any business that we say befits the hour. Thy case, dear friend, shall be my precedent. As thou gotst Milan, I'll come by Naples. Draw thy sword. One stroke shall free thee from the tribute which thou payest, and I, the king, 
shall love thee. Draw together. And when I rear my hand, do you the like to fall it on Gonzalo? Oh, but one word. Then let us both be sudden. My master, through his art, foresees the danger that you, his friend, are in and sends me forth. For else, his project dies. To keep them living, shake off slumber and beware. Awake! Awake! Good angels, preserve the king! Well now. Ho, oh, awake! Why are you drawn? Wherefore this ghastly looking? What's the matter? Well, whilst we stood here securing your repose, uh, even now we, we heard a hollow burst, a, a bellowing li like bulls, or, or rather lions. Uh, did, did not wake you. It struck mine ear most terribly. I heard nothing. Oh, twas a den to fright a monster's ear, to make an earthquake. Sure, it was the roar of a whole herd of lions. Heard you this, Gonzalo? Oh, upon mine honor, sir, I, I heard a humming, and that was a strange one, too, which, which did awake me. I shaked you, sir, and cried as my eyes opened. I saw their weapons drawn. There was a noise, that's verily. Tis best we stand upon our guard, or that we quit this place. Let's draw our weapons. Lead off this ground, and let's make further search for my poor son. Heavens, keep him from these beasts, for he is sure in the island. Lead away. Hospital, my lord shall know what I have done. So, king, go safely on to seek thy sight. All the infections that the sun sucks up from bogs, pens, flats, on Prosper fall and make him by inch meal a disease. His spirits hear me, and yet I needs must curse. But they'll nor pinch, fright me with urchin shows, pitch me in the mire, nor lead me like a firebrand in the dark out of my way, unless he bid them. But for every trifler they set upon me, their tricks at my footfall, sometime am I all wound with adders, who with cloven tongues do hiss me into madness. Lo, now lo, here comes a spirit of his, and to torment me for bringing wood in slowly. I'll fall flat, perchance he will not mind me. Here's neither bush nor shrub to bear off any weather at all, and another storm bearing. If it should thunder as it did before, I know not where I should hide my head. What have we here? Man or fish? Dead or alive? A fish. Smells like a fish. A very ancient and fish-like smell. A kind of knot of the newest poor John. A strange fish. But were I in England now, as once I was, and had but this fish painted, not a holiday fool theirs, but would give a piece of silver. There would this monster make a man. Any strange beast there makes a man. Last, the storm has come again. My best way is to creep under his gabardine. There is no shelter hereabouts. Misery acquaints a man with strange bedfellows. I will hear shroud till the dregs of the storm be passed. I shall no more to see, to see. Here shall I die ashore. This is a very scurvy tune to sing at a man's funeral. Well, here's my comfort. Do not torment me, oh. What's the matter? Have we devils here? I have not scaped drowning to be afeard now of your four legs, for it hath been said, as proper a man as ever went on four legs cannot make him give ground. And it shall be said so again while Stefano breathes at its nostrils. 
The spirit torments me. Oh. This is some monster of the isle with four legs, who hath got, as I take it, an ague. Where the devil should he learn our language? I will give him some relief. If it be but for that, if I can recover him and keep him tame and get to Naples with him, he's a present for any emperor that ever trod on Neat's leather. Do not torment me, prithee. I'll bring my wood home faster. Oh, he's in his fit now, and does not talk after the wisest. He shall taste of my bottle. If he have never drunk wine afore, we'll go near to remove his fit. If I can recover him and keep him tame, I will not take too much for him. He shall pay for him that hath him, and that soundly. Thou dost me yet but little hurt. Thou wilt anon, I know it by thy trembling. Now Prospero works. Come on your ways, open your mouth. Here is that which will give language to you, cat. Open your mouth. This will shake your shaking, I can tell you, and that soundly. You cannot tell who's your friend. Open your chaps again. I should know that voice. It should be. But he is drowned, and these are devils. Oh, defend me! Four legs and two voices? A most delicate monster. His forward voice now is to speak well of his friend, and his backward voice is to utter foul speeches and to detract. If all the wine in my bottle will recover him, I will help his ague. Come! Amen. I will pour some in thy other mouth. Stefano! Doth thy other mouth call me? Mercy, mercy, this is a devil and no monster. Stefano, if thou beest Stefano, touch me. Speak to me, for I am Trinculo. Be not afeard, thy good friend Trinculo. If thou beest Trinculo, come forth. I'll pull thee by thy lesser legs. If any be Trinculo's legs, these are they. Thou art very Trinculo indeed. How camest thou to be the siege of this moon calf? Can he vent Trinculo's? <laughs> <laughs> I took him to be killed with a thunderstroke, but art thou not drowned, Stefano? I hope now thou art not drowned. Is the storm overblown? I hid me under the dead moon calf's gabardine for fear of the storm. And art Thou living Stefano, O oh, Stefano, two Neapolitans escaped! Prithee, do not turn me about. My stomach is not constant. These be fine things, and if they be not sprites, that's a brave god and bear celestial liquor. I will kneel to him. How oh, that didst thou escape? How camest thou hither? Swear by this bottle how thou camest hither. I escaped upon a butt of sack which the sailors heaved overboard by this bottle, which I made of the bark of the tree with mine own hands since I was cast ashore. I'll swear upon that bottle to be thy true subject, for the liquor is not earthly. Here, then, how thou escapest. Swum ashore, man, like a duck. I can swim like a duck, I'll be sworn. Here, kiss the book. Though thou canst swim like a duck, thou art made like a goose. Mm. Oh, Stefano, hast any more of this? Uh, the whole butt, man. My cellar is in a rock by the seaside where my wine is hid. How now, Mooncalf? How does thine ague? you? Hast thou not dropped from heaven? Out of the moon, I do assure thee. I was the man of the moon when time was. I have seen thee in her, and I do adore thee. Come, swear to that, kiss the book. I will furnish it anon with new contents, I swear. By this good light, this is a very shallow monster. I have feared him, a very weak monster, the man in the moon, a most poor, credulous monster. Well-drawn monster in good suit. I'll show thee every fertile inch of the island, and I will kiss thy foot. I prithee be my god. Come on then, down and swear. I shall laugh myself to death at this puppy-headed monster, a most scurvy monster. I could find in my heart to beat him like a dog. Come, kiss. But that the poor monster's in drink, an abominable monster. I'll show thee the best springs. I'll pluck thee berries. I'll fish for thee and get thee wood enough. A plague upon the tyrant I serve. I'll bear him no more sticks, but follow thee. 
thou wondrous man. <laughs> a most ridiculous monster to make a wonder of a poor drunkard. I prithee, let me bring thee where crabs grow, and I with my long nails will dig thee pig nuts, show thee a jay's nest, and instruct thee how to snare the nimble marmoset. I'll bring thee young scammels from the rock. Wilt thou go with me? I prithee now, lead the way without any more talking. Trinculo, the king and all our company else being drowned, we will inherit here. Here. Bear my bottle, fellow Trinculo. We'll fill him by and by again. Farewell, master. Farewell, farewell. Howling monster, a drunken monster. No more dams I'll make for fish. No more fetch and firing at requiring. Nor scrape trencher, nor wash dish. Ban, Ban, Ca Caliban has a new master. Get a new man. Freedom, heyday. Heyday, freedom. Freedom, heyday. Freedom. Oh, brave monster, lead the way. 